Welcome to another episode of Liberty and Justice for All. I'm here with Alan Parker, and we're going to be tackling the issue of forced abortion. Tell us about what is forced abortion, what are the most common forms that it takes, and what are you all doing about it? All right. Well, at the Justice Foundation, we have collected over almost 5,000 legally admissible sworn written testimonies of what abortion does to women in the way of harm and damage to them. So everything I'm going to say about abortion, I know from women who've actually had abortions. And one of the things we found in asking women how abortion affected them was uh, once you make abortion legal, it actually allows other people to force, unduly pressure, or coerce a woman into having an abortion against her will. Now, forced abortion is actually illegal in all 50 states because only a voluntary abortion would be legal. But let me tell you the three kinds. You think, oh, that must never happen in America. When I tell you the three kinds, you'll say, oh, sure. Number one is adult parents forcing a minor daughter to have an abortion against her will. Or sometimes it's the boy's parents forcing her to have an abortion or other adults forcing her to have an abortion against her will, but usually her own parents or guardians. Number two is an adult man forcing a woman to abort his child because he's not happy she's pregnant. She may be thrilled, we can have a baby now. No, we're not. You better get yourself down there sometimes threats of violence or coercion or abuse. And then the third is human trafficking and prostitution, where the pimp doesn't want the woman to have a baby. Uh, So we have developed a center against forced abortion, and we have legal tools that anybody can use to help stop forced abortion, especially the first two kinds, where it's the parent or the father of the child. If it's human trafficking, it's best to get the police involved with them, and they have anti-trafficking forces that can help. But for example, we have a dear parent letter that uh, can be used by anybody listening to this. If they go to our website and download our Center Against Forced Abortion materials, the dear parent letter says, uh, now that you're getting this letter, you know that your daughter's pregnant. This may not. This is not what you wanted, and you're not alone. This is not the first time someone's happened. There are happy, healthy outcomes on the other side of this, and the organization that gave you this is there to help. But there are some legal things you need to know now. Your, your daughter is the mother of this child in her womb, your grandchild, and she has the right to direct the upbringing and education of her child. It's a constitutional right. And she has the right to make decisions respecting prenatal care um, and not you. You don't have to care for your daughter or for her child, but you, well, you don't have to care for her child, but you still have to care for your daughter. So forced abortion is illegal. And here's some of the ways parents do that. So we basically tell them it's illegal. They could be charged with crimes, including fetal homicide, a a crime of murder, a form of murder in 37 states that protect the life of a child in the womb from someone other than the mother killing the child. So uh, basically, parents say things like, uh, if you don't have this abortion, I'm kicking you out of my house. That's very common. That violates the duty under every state's family code to care for your child until they reach the age of majority, usually 18. Or they'll say, I don't care what you say. I've made the appointment. We're going tomorrow. Is that the voluntary consent of the parent? And the child just knows they have to give in to the parent. And number three is things like, if you don't have this abortion, I'm going to beat you within an inch of your life or some threat of physical infliction of that would be child abuse. Uh, Other inflictions of punishments or even inducements to get the child to do something against their will can be a forced abortion. And getting this letter saves about 95% of the cases. We estimate we're saving 1,000 to 2,000 lives a year because we work with 3,000 pregnancy centers across the nation. And this is a very routine, uh, common occurrence, sadly, uh, that but by God's grace, we can help save some of those babies from being killed and the women from emotional trauma. 
Even pro-abortion literature says that if you're coerced into having an abortion, your chances of emotional damage are much greater. Mm. You would think that those who identify themselves as pro-choice would be in favor or should be, in order to be consistent, shouldn't they be in favor <laughs> of what that work that you're doing? They, they absolutely should be. And if you kind of force them into confronting it, they are. And I'll mm. give credit even to say Secretary of State uh, Hillary Clinton mm. condemned China for its forced abortion policy at the time. So, but for example, uh, we are, uh, our names are on the bathroom walls in a lot of places. Uh, I say that sometimes. A woman called me once and said, hey, I saw your name on the bathroom wall. But we are listed as a, if someone's forced you to have an abortion, call this number for help. Uh, and then there was a sort of pro-abortion newspaper who said, why, is a, why are you allowing a pro-life organization to be involved in this? Well, we're just trying to save forced abortions from happening in that case. But they were a little upset that we were doing it. But I will say this, as a legal matter, if you go even before a pro-abortion radical feminist judge, they don't want someone to be forced into an abortion either. So as long as the girl says, I don't want this abortion, you, it can be stopped. If the pressure causes her will to break and she just gets to think, and I can't take care of this baby. My what, parents aren't even with me. Maybe they're right that I'm a stupid, ignorant girl. If they've been saying that to her, that's child abuse, mental child abuse. But if it breaks her will and she says, I want to have an abortion, then if she's in a state where abortion is legal, then she could have an abortion. But as you know, because Dobbs has been reversed, uh, there are 12 to 13 states, depending on how you count them, where it is. Dobbs hasn't been reversed. No, excuse me. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Dobbs reversed Roe Roe. and Casey and its progeny, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And that's good news for America. Yeah. And I believe abortion will eventually be illegal and unthinkable everywhere mm -hmm. because it is a crime against humanity. It hurts women horribly. And the safe haven law allows a woman to be free from the burden of parenting, if that's a burden for her, at no cost, unlike abortion, it's free. And if you're low income in every state, the state will pay for your medical bills. And most of the time, that's the only expense of pregnancy that's significant. You're usually housed somewhere and you eat, and your women tell me you have to buy, spend some money on clothes as you get larger. And uh, But most states, every state will pay for low income prenatal care and delivery, and usually some aftercare also. With that, we'll conclude this episode of Liberty and Justice for All, but I look forward to picking up on some of these points that you were making at the end in our next episode. Thanks for joining us.